you know, your first is really important when it comes to any series, and certain game franchises sure can be intimidating depending on how much history that thing has behind it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Final Fantasy series has been around for 30 gosh diddly dang years, and saying they haven't been a massive influence on the JRPG culture is just... Well, a dumb statement. I mean, they've been around for a long time, guys. But Final Fantasy is probably the most well-known franchise associated with turn-based JRPGs. Like, these are the people responsible for making big emo skinny boy with a sword larger than a minivan a standard for these types of games, so that's something. But if for some reason you've never played a Final Fantasy before and you wanted to get into this series but aren't sure where to start because all you've heard are a bunch of numbers being thrown around when people talk about the series and you quickly start dying from information overload, also what the hecky are these massive chickens, then allow me to help. Final Fantasy Fantasy is an amazing series that has brought a lot of joy and pain to many people, but where you start in the series does kinda matter, and it can be kinda confusing your first time around. So, if you trust me and you want to give Final Fantasy a shot, join me on this adventure down anime lane and let me tell you what your first Final Fantasy game should be. So, let's just start with the basics here. Every Final Fantasy game is different, like drastically different. Basically, different numbers at the end means it's a new game as a completely new story, new characters, game play with a whole shebang. Final Fantasy games are not directly connected to each other. Like yeah, Final Fantasy 15 just came out, but don't think you need to know 14 other games to understand why you're a boy band in the convertible. Like Final Fantasy 8 and 9 have nothing to do with each other and they are their own contained stories and games. The only things that the games have in common are themes, summons, item names, some concepts, chocobos, you know the big birds, and a character named Sid for some freaking reason. And that's really it. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, if the game has the same number on the end of it, but with some extra add-ons, like Crisis Core, Final Fantasy 7, or Final Fantasy 13 2, then those games are a part of the same universe, like a sequel or a prequel, so yeah, 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 okay, makes sense, alrighty, right, moving on. So with all that being said, technically you can start anywhere in the series that isn't a sequel, and you won't be lost. But be real, certain installments are better than others when it comes to getting into the franchise, and where I think you should start is gonna be based off of a few things. So, major disclaimer guys, before some of you go all nuclear in the comments, but my suggestions are not going to be picked on what I think is the quote-unquote best Final Fantasy, because honestly, it's just subjective. Many people have their favorites for different reasons. Enjoyment is based off of preference, after all, and because the series has so much variety in gameplay, story, and graphics, stating which one is the best is just... Well, suicidal, honestly. There really isn't a right answer, and I'd rather not have an angry mob of people burn down my village and steal my crops. But when it's talking about where to enter in the series, I'm gonna be looking at a few things. Number one, enjoyment slash reception. Like, is this game seen as fun by most people and is overall critically praised and not a polarizing love it or hated experience? Number two, presentation. How does the game look? It's art style, it's atmosphere, yada, yada, yada. Honestly, this one is gonna be left up to interpretation for a lot of people. Basically, is the game ugly or not? Number Number three, accessibility. What systems can you play the game on? How easy is the story to get into? Will the game smash your little anime face in with a hammer? Basically, how simple is it to slide into the story and gameplay, and do you need a computer from 1993 to play it? Yeah? Yeah, okay, moving on. Number four, representation for the series. Does the game show off what other Final Fantasy games are kinda like, and have the general vibe for the majority of the series, both new and old? Number five, what about the side games, buns? Okay, yeah, I'm only gonna be talking about the main and installment of the series, guys. Like, if it's got a number at the end of it, that's what I'm talking about. And I know I just broke some of y'all's hearts, because I know Tactics and Dissidia are people's jam, but there are over 8 billion Final Fantasy titles, and I'm trying to make this easy on new people and myself, so bear with me. Okay, so now that we all know what I'm going to be looking at when it comes to some of these top suggestions, from Final Fantasy 1 through 15, allow me to take you on a magical journey if you're one of those lucky souls who hasn't gotten into the series yet and hasn't lost part of their selves to Square Enix. <laughs> Welcome to Bun's Beginner's Guide to Final Fantasy. I'm just trying to help for realsy, I promise. Starting this hot, fresh, and made almost 30 years ago, Final Fantasy 1 through 6. Of course, most people would kind of assume that if you want to start Final Fantasy, you should start with the first game in the series, right? Well, I mean, if you wanna, but honestly, Final Fantasy 1 isn't exactly the most amazing game ever, and it's very, um, how can I say this? 
JRPG-ish, and that can really be said for a few other games in this generation. The games are all unique with combat quirks to turn-based elements, separate stories, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But the most definitive and consistent factor in these games is the setting and theme. These titles are very much traditional fantasy, as in Dungeons and Dragons, Mages, Pretty Bull Bladies, Knights in Armor, Kings, Queens, Jesters, Crystals, someone probably gonna get stabbed, lots of old magic, and something about honor or some crap. So if you like that, then you should look into these. Now, these titles are on a variety of systems, and I've had many remakes. They have PC ports, the 3DS versions, they on PSN, they on your toaster, they on your phone, they on you. But when it comes to the better and more appropriate entry levels in this group, I would have to suggest either Final Fantasy IV, 5 or 6, mainly because they are critically praised, are available on multiple systems, and really show off the best of the traditional fantasy style, which the series was really known for back in the day before things got super anime. But of course, 6 is the main standout, and to many people consider this one one of the best video games of all time. If that doesn't hype you up, I don't know what does. So I really can't argue and say that this game isn't worth your time, and definitely not a bad place to start. You will hear a lot of people compare the new Final Fantasy games to these titles, and maybe Final Fantasy 2 if you find that one dude. So if you want to be a part of the big boy club and enter the series by becoming a quote-unquote true Final Fantasy fan, then yes, 4, 5, or 6 are the titles for you. Especially 6, because apparently that's just like the bee's knees. I don't know, give it a shot, do what you want. But of course, when these games came out, Final Fantasy was still a semi-well-known series to a really niche group of people, but then all that changed when Final Fantasy 7 hit the scene. Now, even if you don't know the franchise, at some point or another, you've heard of Final Fantasy 7 at least once, unless you've been using your mom's laptop for the past 20 years and avoided anything gaming related in fear you have to answer your mother when she asks why the lady with the silver hair has such a long sword. But yes, Final Fantasy VII is the game that put the series on the map and is one of the most successful games on the PS1 and of all time. So like it was kind of a big deal. So for a lot of people, Final Fantasy VII was their first game in the series, but the game was hella different from the past titles. The first being the game went for a futuristic fantasy style and story and VII was the first 3D Final Fantasy game. Game. So it had a lot of new stuff going for it. And whether or not Final Fantasy VII is overrated is another discussion for another time. It's overrated. But no matter how you look at it, yes, it is considered a good game and literally on everything. And you could easily make this your first game in the series. But the version you can play now is the version made 20 years ago and Final Fantasy VII has not aged well. And because it was the first 3D game, it's not very fun to look at. It's ugly. And I mean that in the nicest way possible, but I can say it's a lot harder harder to get absorbed in Seven's world because of it. The older Final Fantasies had HD remakes, and in their original 2D art style was still more pretty to look at than Welcome to the Wonderful World of Polygon 7. Even though the HD remake is coming up, we aren't sure if that's going to be any good, and even if it is, Final Fantasy 7 is very unique and one of the few futuristic light games in the franchise, so it really doesn't represent the rest of the series. So with all that being said, it's good! but it ain't the best place to start. Moving on! After the 7 high, Final Fantasy VIII and IX happened, and as you can expect, the general enthusiasm for these games weren't nearly as much compared to the all-perfect, beautiful, flawless Final Fantasy VII. But since then, every game after VII really stood out in art style setting and felt incredibly unique from each other since Square felt like they could experiment with different styles of fantasy universes. So with that being said, Final Fantasy VIII is kind of an oddball since people felt like it was a setback from VII, even though it kept its futuristic design, but it went for a more romantic, like story with the pretty boys and the kissy kissy crap. And while the game received critical praise, its overall appeal didn't last too long, and people don't hold Final Fantasy A too high of regards anymore since the overall complaint was its gameplay and combat system was weird, to say the least. So can you start here? Uh, yeah, sure, technically, but I can't guarantee you'll have a good time or you'll be able to figure things out with ease, but hey, if you like pretty boys and this kind of stuff, then sure, go for it. But then there's Final Fantasy IX, which does kind of go back to the Dungeons and Dragons style, but with a twist, and also cuties. The game made the 3D graphics a lot more bearable and visually interesting, and made things feel more cohesive as a whole. IX is also considered one of the better Final Fantasies around, and many people's personal favorite, since it's fun to play and learn, and things weren't nearly as complicated and wacky as other installments. Now, IX is a pretty decent combination of new and old Final Fantasy, and you can get the game on a few systems, so overall, I can 
can easily suggest this as your starting point if the universe looks interesting to you. So here's what it looks like, guys. If you can get behind this, then give it a shot. You shouldn't totally absolutely hate it. But even though this could be your first, when it comes to my top pick and what I personally think is the best place to start in the series, it has to be Final Fantasy 13. Final Fantasy 10. I know some of y'all are a little disappointed with this pick, but after a lot of back and forth and dwelling on the subject, yes, 10 should probably be your first Final Fantasy game. Now, allow me to defend and justify myself for a few minutes before people start revving up those comments. So 10 was the first Final Fantasy game to come out on PlayStation 2, and it's generally considered one of the best games in the series. So on top of it being considered pretty good, it's also just the right amount of new and old Final Fantasy to really showcase what the series is all about. I know many people see 10 as one of the last true Final Fantasy games and that everything after it is all poo-poo trash that shouldn't be considered part of the franchise, but at the end of the day, they are still a part of the series and love or hate them, but many people find enjoyment out of the newer games, which I'll talk about soon. So when it comes to representing the whole series, all the Final Fantasy games need to be considered new and old, as wonky as some of the newer ones are. Now, keep in mind, I am not saying 10 is the best Final Fantasy game by any means, since it's got its own share of problems, like being super linear, and it's got some mega weird moments that I can never erase from my mind no matter how much glue I sniff, but 10 kinda does embody the whole series if you think about it, and it's the best place to start for newcomers because it's on everything from PS2 to PS3, PS4, PC. Final Fantasy X is currently on every main system, so that's a starter. Presentation is nice. Even though this is the first Final Fantasy on PlayStation 2, it still holds up pretty well. It's also the first Final Fantasy that had voice acting, and overall is pretty good performances across the board, give or take a few scenes. <laughs> oh my god. It's still a turn-based JRPG. 10 does stick to the traditional Final Fantasy combat for the most part, so if you play 10, you'll easily get a feel for the majority of the other games in the series. It's linear. Now, I know this is kind of a hit or miss for a lot of people, but when it comes to easy to enter games, as in like not getting lost and getting confused of where to go next, linearity is kind of preferred. So while linearity is kind of seen as controversial in the series, when it comes to someone who has no clue what they're doing, I would prefer the game telling me where to go which is forward. Which brings me to my next point, easy for beginners. Final Fantasy X is not too terribly hard, and because of its linearity and how it kind of tutorializes most of the game, it's not super difficult. But it does have a relatively decent learning curve and has some really hard challenge later down the line. So if you're new to turn-based JRPGs, it does explain its mechanics pretty well. Not to mention the sphere grid is very easy to understand and it's very hard to mess it up. So if I'm completely new to JRPGs, I don't feel like I'm gonna be overwhelmed by some of these options. And speaking of things that aren't too complicated, the story is straightforward, although it's a little derpy. Say what you want about Titus being a questionable protagonist, but the overall plot is pretty easy to follow from start to finish. And yeah, the game's got some really weird, wacky moments, but eh, depending on who you are, you can find that charming. And most people would consider the story pretty good. It's got its heartfelt moments, interesting characters, all that jazz. So you're not scratching your head the whole time or bashing your head against the wall, and you might get a few laughs out of it. So yeah, overall, pretty decent story, especially for a newcomer. The setting, it's both futuristic and old-timey. It's just weird water hybrid. A good proper mix, you know, like when you mix two things together and get something completely new out of it. It's got a little bit of both, and I think that's what matters. And then to drive it all home, again, Final Fantasy X is considered one of the better games in the franchise. And it is this middleman between old and new Final Fantasy. So I can confidently say that if you don't like X, chances are you're not gonna like other games in the series. Rather be its gameplay, story, presentation, etc, etc. Because aspects of 10 show up in essentially all of the other games in one way or another. So with all that being said, if I could only recommend one game in the series, it would have to be Final Fantasy X. But luckily, we live in a world full of choices and preferences, and you can start wherever the heck you want, I don't care. But to assure starting off the franchise right and what looks appealing to you personally, Final Fantasy 7, 6, VI, and 9 are all worthy starting places in the series. But the question is, what about the newer games, Buns? Aren't you gonna talk about my waifu? Well yeah, the newer games do have something to offer too, but I don't recommend them to start. But let me just give you a brief rundown of the games in case you want to fight the man and go against everything I just said only to spite me. But let's do a lightning round of SBB's mega fast list of games that are problematic. Okay, let's start with the odd ones out because they think they're so special with internet routers shoved up their holes, but Final Fantasy 11 and 14. Both are MMOs, you know, as a not a JRPG, and Final Fantasy 11 is kind of on its last leg and high key going to be shut down soon, but currently Final 
Final Fantasy XIV is going strong and people won't stop bugging me to join it, but hey yo, if you like MMOs, give XIV a shot. It's got all the Final Fantasy vibes without any of the actual design of the previous game, so that's why it's an odd ball out. Okay, moving on! So talking about the actual problematic kids, that's Final Fantasy XII and XIII. Now, XII is considered a pretty good game depending on who you ask, but its design completely hijacked the gameplay for weird real-time stuff. It felt like an MMO with how grindy it was, and the main character wasn't actually the main character, and honestly, he shouldn't have been in the game, because the story focused on a crap ton of politics and world building, and also the color brown. It's a love it or hate it Final Fantasy, so it's too polarizing to recommend as your first, but it's got nothing on Final Fantasy XIII, which semi-caused the community to implode into total mayhem, and the great Final Fantasy fan wars began. I have a complicated relationship with this installment. XIII was the first PlayStation 3 game, and it looked like a godsend from heaven at first, but eventually turned out to be so polarizing for people that stuff just got weird after this one. Final Fantasy XIII is as linear as it gets in most games. Its combat, while fun and customizing, is really automatic and repetitive, and its story is terrible or great depending on who you talk to. So 13 is the definition of love or hate, so again, can't recommend it or its two sequels because here is a graph on how those sequels kind of play out. It's a mess, to be honest, and uh, you know, I actually like 13, which is saying something, but I, I know better. This game has caused problems. We lost a lot of good people in the 13 wars. Oh my god. Yeah, boy. Oh man. But after the 13 situation, Square Enix spent a lot of time in the timeout corner, and Final Fantasy 15 hit the scene after a lot of drama that I'd rather not talk about because it makes me sad to think about it. Oh, what could have been. But yes, 15 is the most recent in the series to come out, and a lot of people love and enjoy this game, myself included, but I can't recommend this one as your first either. Of course, this game has been a lot of people's first experience with the franchise, but that's because it's the most quote-unquote AAA the series has ever been. 15 is considered a good game. It has the soul of Final Fantasy, but it focused more on real-time gameplay and an open world than any other games in the franchise, and its plot is lacking. Like, it's really lacking. Like, lots of content was cut from this game and they are still patching it in. And it's very short story-wise compared to the other games in the series. And long stories and world building is kind of Final Fantasy's things, and 15 just doesn't have that, in comparison at least. You could start here, but it could also really turn you off from the rest of the series since the focus on the games are totally different. On top of 15, there's also Final Fantasy Type-0 and World of Final Fantasy, which you can get right now on PlayStation 4. And both are interesting in their own way, but definitely aren't the best in the series by any means, and you should only look into them after coming to the conclusion that Final Fantasy is for you. For reals though, World of Final Fantasy is a massive fan service ride straight into chibi hell. It is something else, let me tell ya. But seriously, look into the sequels if you end up liking this series. You know, Tactics is good, uh, Crisis Core is a very good sequel, I like it a lot. Uh, 10 2, 10 2, I hear is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Other ones, you know. Uh, just look into it, but uh, play a main installment first, for realsies. So that kind of wraps up my massive Final Fantasy rambles. I know the series can seem really intimidating from the outside looking in, but eh, you could choose any game at random and chances are you would land on something good. It's kind of a miracle, really. All of the games have something different to offer and you never get the same experience twice. So the fact that the series has been constantly putting out relatively fun and well-received games, give or take a few bad apples, their track record is pretty impressive. Final Fantasy is an iconic name for a reason, after all, so I hope this video will help you get into the series some way or somehow. I don't know. But I'm honestly really curious, what was your first Final Fantasy game or experience and what's your favorite in the series? Because everybody's got a favorite, Lord knows I do. But please leave a comment, tell me all the things. Who is your favorite waifu? Do you think Final Fantasy 13 was a mistake? Because I know a lot of people sure do. Tell me all your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. I am gonna go eat some pizza or something like that or take a nap, probably take a nap. All right, toodaloo everybody, it's been real. Ayo, hey, welcome to the end of the video. This channel is sponsored by Gamefly. Gamefly is a great cheap service to rent out new games so you don't waste $60 on trash you regret buying. Lord knows some awesome games have come out within the last few weeks, so you know, get one of them for free, try them out, or try a new Final Fantasy. I don't know. Improvise. Also, follow me on Twitter, gosh dang it. You know, I post things on there. A lot, actually. I think I tweet too often, but eh, that's just me being paranoid. You know, I got a Twitter, got a Tumblr, I got a Twitch. So you can see me play games and stuff. That's a lot of fun too. You know, do the things, follow the buttons. Um, also use game flight code. Come on, guys, give me something, anything. All right, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye now, bye bye.